fellowship. I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. I don't know about you, when you got up this morning, did you say thank you? I'm saying thank you again. That's all I can say. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for this day. I'm Pastor Rosalie Charlie, pastor here at Faith Fellowship 5937, Watt Avenue, North Highlands, California. Feel free. Call your friends. Call your family. Call your in-laws. Call them. Tell them, come on in, your neighbors, and worship with us. And worship with us in spirit and in truth. Come on, let's worship the Lord. How many know he's worthy? He's worthy to be praised. For a long time, time is winding up. You better make up your mind. It's getting late in the evening. Sun is going down. You better get right, get right. Probably may be found. I wanna know who's on the Lord's side.
Thanksgiving, Faith Fellowship family. My name is Kim, and I'm here to give you announcements this week. A leadership meeting has been scheduled for Saturday, December 5th at 10 a.m. via Zoom. The Zoom link and conference call information will be emailed to you. Giving Campaign All members are asked to participate in a giving campaign for our church beautification projects. We would like to raise $50,000 between November 1st, 2020 and January 31st, 2021. Pledge cards have been sent to each member and they are also available at the church office. Please pray about your level of commitment to this campaign above your offerings and tithes. To donate via Givelify, simply select 20th anniversary to make your donation. Thanksgiving basket giveaway is November 24, 2020 at St. John Missionary Baptist Church. The address is 2130 4th Street in Sacramento. To reserve a basket, please call 916-868-9537. Certain criteria must be met. Food assistance for low income and homeless will be distributed every Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday from 9 a.m. to noon at the North Highlands Christian Fruit Food Ministry. The address is 6007 Water Avenue, North Highlands. It's on the corner of Water Avenue and Freedom Park Drive. For additional information, call 916-955-1010. You must bring ID. Many lives have changed during this pandemic. If you are in a need of a helping hand, please contact the church office at 916-339-9156 or Katie Terrell at 916-692-8403. All requests will be kept confidential. Please join the Bible study classes on Tuesday evenings at 6.45 p.m. and Thursday mornings at 10.30 a.m. Please call the conference line at 605-472-5260. The access code is 253-501-POUND. Please remember to mute your phone. Faith Fellowship Hour of Power prayer line is every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. The call-in number is 605-313-4118. And the access code is 126049-POUND. All in-church activities have been canceled until further notice. The ministry leaders will contact you for any Zoom or conference call meetings. Tithes and offerings can be paid through our giving app, Givelify. You may also mail your offering or drop it off at the church office on Tuesdays between 10 a.m and 2 p.m. until further notice. This concludes your announcements for this week. Embracing one church, one mind, and one Christ. It's time for family prayer. Please join me wherever you are, whether you're in your home, in your car, or if you're joining us later, please bow your heads as well as your hearts as we go before the very throne of, of grace. Our Father and our God, I thank you today for the awesome privilege to come before you, Father, to give you praise, to give you honor, to give you glory, for God, you are deserving of the same. God, I thank you for all that you're doing in the lives of your people here at Faith Fellowship Community Church. God, you've brought us a long ways. We've recently celebrated 20 years of ministry and of mission. And God, we look forward for what you're going to do both in and through us in this, our 21st year of existence. God, we can't do nothing without you. And because that's so, we come this morning, God. We give you the praise, the honor, and the glory that you deserve. But we also seek your wisdom. We seek your knowledge. We seek your direction. And so, God, because you are who you are, in order for us to do what you've called us to do. Please empower us, endow, endow us from on high with your Holy Ghost power. Give us a mind, God, to obey you, 
to submit ourselves and be willing to do what you've called us as a church body to do, not only here in the North Highlands community, but beyond. And God, help us to start with our family, our friends, those in our respective circles of influence. Give us a boldness, a willingness to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. But beyond just opening our mouths and telling people about who you are and the difference you're making in our lives, give us, God, also a passion, a desire to walk the walk that we talk. Give us a desire, God, to show the difference that you make in and through our lives. God, in spite of what's going on throughout this state and around the country, I am so thankful that you're still on the throne. God, there's no confusion about who's king of kings and lord of lords. We don't have to worry about transition of power in heaven because, God, you rule and you reign. There is no confusion. There is no chaos. And, God, we just give you praise for your awesome, awesome authority, power, and just, Father, the fact that you're worthy of our entire beings. You gave your life, Father, for us. You asked us to give our lives to you. And so, God, help us to do that but more importantly, help us to be that. God, I come this morning making intercession on behalf of my brothers and sisters who make up this body, Father, many of whom have chronic and persistent illnesses. And so, God, I lift them up. I commend them to you. I ask that you would touch them, God, with your healing power. For you are Jehovah Rapha, our healer. God, there are also some amongst us who are depressed. We're discouraged, God, whether because of our financial situation, our relationships, our interactions with our, our family members, and perhaps some of us, God, have even lost our jobs as a result of this pandemic. And so we're down. So we need a word today to encourage us, to pick us up, to lift our spirits, to remind us that you are our God. And that, Father, if you break us, it is not to discourage us. It's to prepare us, God, for future use. And so give us hope. Give us courage that no matter what we're going through, if you bring us to it, you will bring us through it. Give us hope. Give us courage this morning to keep on keeping on. And then, God, there are some of us who've lost loved ones. Various reasons, God, including COVID-19. But whatever the case, you've called loved ones home. And so we're hurting. We need comfort. We need consolation. God, I pray that you would pour out your, 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 just your peace, your grace, your mercy upon those who are grieving and mourning. And then lastly, Lord God, I pray this, this morning that you would bless the shepherd of this house, our beloved pastor, Rose Charlie, God, use her for your glory and for our good. Give her, God, a word from on high. And may those of us under the sound of her voice who hear it have open hearts and open minds, will willingly and gladly receive it, and then pray to you, God, to help us to do it. For we desire to be doers of your word and not just hearers only. These and other blessings I ask in the precious name of your son, even Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Praise the Lord. Faith Fellowship. Thank God today for being here again to bring you a word. Pray right now that you would bow your heads with me. Father, we come right now. I come with thanksgiving. Thanking you for this opportunity that you allowed me to come and speak for you. God, I need you to speak through me so that I, someone will open their heart and their minds and realize, God, that you want them to hear it. God, I ask you to bless these clay lips. Use me now for your glory. Let me decrease and you increase. Father, I thank you 
Have your way now. In Jesus' name, amen. Today, I thought it would be a time, I feel like in the midst of what's going on, love. My subject today is going to be what love got to do with it. I know it's a circular song for some of you all, but sometimes a circular song can remind you of what something spiritual. And so as I began to listen to this song on the radio the other day, what love got to do with it, got to do with it, got to do with it. That's all God is asking us to do, love. So right now, if you would turn with me to the scripture of St. Luke, the 10th chapter, 25th through the 37th verse. And behold, it's very familiar, it's a parable of the great good Samaritan. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tested him, saying, Teach him, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And he said to him, What is written in the law? What is your, what is your reading of it? So he answered and said, you should love the Lord your God with all of your heart, all of your soul, with all of your strength, and all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you have answered rightly. Do this and you will live. But he, wanting to justify himself, said to Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Then Jesus answered and said, a certain man, went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves who stripped him of his clothing, wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. Now, by a chance, a certain priest came down the road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Likewise, the Levite, when he arrived at the place, he came and looked and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he joined it, came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion. And so he went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. And he set him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, took care of him. And on the next day, he said, when he departed, he took out two denarius, gave them to the innkeeper, and said to him, take, take care of him, and whatever more you spend, when I come again, I will repay. So which of these three of you think was your neighbor to him who fell among thieves? And he said, he who shows mercy on him. Then Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. So today, we're going to talk about very familiar scripture, the Good Samaritan. And when we look at it, we use love so lightly. We write songs, we sing songs about it, we write poems about love. But really, what is love? We say emotions, a feeling. Really, God love is something else. God says, keep my commandments. And so we find this young Jewish uh, teacher, I uh, mean lawyer. And when I say lawyer, that means he wasn't an attorney like we see him. He was a lawyer that kept the law and he kept records. So I just want to, who is my neighbor? That's the biggest question is asked, who is my neighbor? My neighbor is anyone that needs my help. Can I get a witness? And so when we look at this, we have gotten so selfish, God has spoiled most of us. We've been spoiled, if you want to admit it. We've been spoiled, and we think it's all about me, 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 me. So when we look at this, we get the attention. we not listening to the song, Tina Turner, but what God is saying. God say, what is love? God so loved the world. In John 3, 16, that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe on him, should not perish and have everlasting life. So we, as I say, we, we, we've gotten so humble. We got to the place. We sing. We, we act like the songs we sing. Pass me not, O gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry. 
while on others thou art calling. Do not pass me by. Me, me, me. What God has for me, it is for me. I know without a doubt he will surely bring me out. What God has for me, it is for me. Don't it? We sing that, but we don't only sing it, we act it. It's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's not my mother, it's not my father, but it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It seems in all of our churches we are praying, we are stuck, and we have not found out who is our neighbor. Can I get a witness? Are we, or do we have a reason not to know? Because we think we are talking about the person that's next door to us. Sometimes we don't even talk to our neighbors. We don't even know their name. In fact, they see us leave on Sunday morning, going to church, never say good morning. What do you think God would think about that? If you understand that all things are possible, you need to know that God expects us to witness for him. So the story goes, Jesus began to talk to this young lawyer. He was testing Jesus. Now, every now and then, Satan will send somebody to test you, to ask you questions. And that's why we talk about coming to Bible study and learning more about God. And so we see this young man, he was seeker. He was a seeker. His desire now, in the 25th verse, a man came to Christ seeking a way to inherit eternal life. What would you tell him if you, someone wanted to inherit eternal life? He demanded now, know this, he demanded about the law. Love God with all of your heart. That's your emotion. Love God with all thy soul. That's your spiritual being. Love God with all your strength. That's your physical being, love God with all thy mind, our mental life. So the story goes on. This, this Samaritan was going down to Jericho. He was a Samaritan. Samaritan and Jews didn't like each other. So here come this Jewish guy coming down the road, and here come a Samaritan. The priest passed by. And he just kept walking. I wonder why the priest didn't stop. He didn't even look. And sometimes we got preachers like that today. The only time they want to be seen is in the pulpit. Never touch people. Not even want to shake their hand. But that's okay. What love got to do with it? So this man, he passed on by. He saw the man wounded. We see people wounded, and we keep passing by. Well, I don't want to just get on the minister. We all are ministers. We all are to minister to somebody that's hurting. And so we see him going down, and this man on the ground hurt. Here come the Levi. He could have been the music man. He could have been the deacon. He could have been anybody. But he saw this man hurt, wounded on the ground. What did he do? He went, he did look. How many times we are looky lose? We will look. If they don't look like us, we just keep on going. Come on. God says, I don't have no respect to person. And that's who is letting you know who your neighbor really is. Not the color, not the kind, your same kind. Reach out and help somebody. And so he went on about his business. But here come a Samaritan. One who didn't get along with Jews, who didn't like Jews. Jews didn't like Samaritans. They were poor. They were half breed. And you know, some of us like that today. We, we act the same way at half breed, different cultures, especially on Sunday morning. But what did he do? He stopped. And what did he do? He reached down. He poured wine. I mean, maybe it was Boone wine, Boone Town. Y'all know what wine I'm talking about. Wine to cleanse the wound. The oil was to treat the wound. Then afterward, he got off of his beast. And he went and he put the man on his beast. And he took him to an inn. What you would have done? Could you have done that? 
Well, you can sit in church all you want all day Sunday, don't miss a Sunday, and you pass in church, pass in church, get in the church. Something is wrong with that. Check your love out. I'm so sick of people talking about love. Oh, you tell them I love you or oh, love you more. What is that? I love you more. No, God is saying love me more and not man. He said, I want you to love. And so this man went on to help this man, took him to an inn. How many would have taken him to, uh, how many would have taken him to the Holiday Inn? Put him on your credit card. Come on, would you have done that? Well, I don't know, they could have been drunk. They could have, no, that ain't, your, that ain't your calling. It's his calling. He went and he paid for the man. He bind him up. He took care of him. And then he said, if anything else he needs, he said, I'll pay it when I come back. How many of us are passing church, coming to church? And that's why maybe some of us get here late because we don't want to meet nobody on the sidewalk, because I got to get that open up the prayer. I got to get that a saying, no, God is looking at what you're doing. What love got to do with it? We are so selfish, and God is saying, if you want to be like me, we like to sing the song, I want to be more and more like Jesus. Well, talk is cheap. He wants you to stop pretending because he don't bless pretension. He pretenders. He bless those that will do his work and do his will. And so this man, after he, this man helped him. But how many wounded folks do you and I pass by on the streets, on our way, on, uh, on our way to church, on our way to work? And we'll pass by. We might feel sorry for them, but we won't do nothing. Sometime we look at them. We have to stop and wait and see what we can do. Maybe I need to remind you, we are the light of the world. We are the lights that sit up on the city. We can't be hid. God can't bless, pretend. You stop pretending. Ask God to help you. I want to tell you something uh, about this story. We've heard about it so many times, but some of us need a joke need to be jolted back to reality. The story elevates us, our thinking. When Jesus made this, he said, I didn't come to see the, 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 the well. I came to seek and to save that which is lost. We spend so much time in church laying our hands on somebody that's been saved for 50 years, and we want to heal them, go out on the outside and heal somebody else. Can I get a witness? Every time we want the preacher to throw out people that don't look right, people that don't act, act right. We want the preacher to do it, get, and we get blamed for it because we are looking at the outward part of the person. But folks that are messed up need a savior. And when they come to church, even if they're not dressed like you are dressed, we ought to treat them because that could be an angel unaware, regardless of their race. Regardless of their kind, whatever, we, we need to start embracing them. We won't go out and witness, but we, at least we can help those that comes in. The woman, uh, we constantly say there are so many people that are broken and wounded, and they come to church, and we so, we so holy, we want them to sit in a certain place. No, 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 God said that ain't love. I want you to love Christians must be willing to keep those, help those in need. That's what he's keeping us here for, to help those in need. His only, he said, I gave my only begotten son. And I need to let you know, love is giving. If you're sitting up talking about you love faith fellowship and you ain't giving nothing, God, no, you're not. You're not helping faith fellowship. I'm not talking about the church. I'm talking about building the, the kingdom for God. Because salvation will produce good works. Some of us are so busy with self and pleasure that we don't have time to help others. Can I get a witness? Many of us are interested in getting but not giving. Y'all didn't hear that. I say most of us are interested in getting but not giving. Can I get a witness? If you want to enjoy this Christian life, then learn to give, learn to share, learn to help. We all have somebody in our lives we need to bless. 
God has sent people in our lives to bless them. Remember, he said, the harvest is ripe, the laborers are few. But when we look at Matthew 9, uh, 12, the Pharisees saw that, they said the disciples, that why does your teacher go and eat with tax collectors and sinners? But what did Jesus tell them in Matthew 9, 13? But go and learn about this means I desire mercy and not sacrifice. For I did not come to call the righteous, but the sinner unto repentance. You know, I want to close today with, we talked about the Good Samaritan. And we like to want the preacher to preach about persons in the Bible, but we never want to hear about the God of the Bible. Well, I need to tell you, God came to Faith Fellowship in 2019 and showed us what a Samaritan looks like. We've been hearing about it, but God says, I'm going to show you what it's like. In case you wasn't here or you've forgotten, because we tend to forget when God has blessed us. Well, when I think about we, we had a Samaritan visiting in September of 2019 right here. After the pastor resigned in April 2019, I was not aware we was in the process of purchasing this building, or should I say this small mall, until I was told in a board meeting, and, me, and I met the real estate person, and I'm sitting there looking, how did I get into this? And he gave the figures of what we needed, how much it would take for us to buy this this little mall. We had the down payment, but did not have closing costs, and we didn't have his feet. So I left that meeting praying, Lord, saying, God, you promised if we do all we can, I know you will do all you can. So the following Sunday, I relayed this to the congregation. We need $150,000. I'm sure that some of them looked at me without faith, just look. And a member, as soon as I said it, she was here, and she stood up and said, I have 1,000. And then I found out this lady didn't even have a job, but she had love for God and his kingdom. And I said, we need, a, now the church need before I, she sat down, I said, now we need 149,000. So the following Tuesday, I went to my Tuesday morning Bible study. I have about 10 churches in the community that I went to them and asked them, could they help us to raise this money? Could they give me a donation? And out of these 10 churches, they all gave at least, at least $15,000. Hey, I said, thank you, Lord. And then as I was leaving out of the church, one of the sisters, we call her the gladiator, Glad gladiator, she says she, that's what she is, Dorothy Lane. Dorothy come in to pay what she was donating. I said, Dorothy, take this letter and give it to somebody. We might get a donation. And Dorothy looked at me. She said, I'm going down the street to this white church. What white church? The white church down the street. I'll see if they're going to help. And she went to Pastor Bill Krause uh, the following Sunday. It's called Family Community Church. And when she walked away, she said, he'll be up here Sunday. And I'm like, okay, we'll trust God. But I tell you what, Sunday morning after prayer, Brother Bill Cross walked in that door. And he said, Pastor, I'm going to help you all get the rest of this money. Because he saw it was told we need 100000 We had ninety. He said, I want to make sure you all get the ninety. Now, I need to let you know when I said white, he's a white pastor down he's a white Caucasian man because that's the way we identify ourselves on Sunday morning the black church the white church God don't believe in that that's why our blessing that's why some of this uh, Baron this uh, this virus going on he want us to be together and so he came in and he said pastor let me speak to your congregation because I got to go back to my church he said but I want to make sure y'all get this in the community I'm here to help you I said go ahead on bro and the people began to rally after he talked and I told the trustees count the money fast so he want to make up the difference when he counted the money we had eleven thousand dollars he said well since y'all got it I'm gonna give you another two thousand that's a Samaritan. We didn't ask. We asked him, but he went on and he helped us. 
faith fellowship, don't forget that. That's too easy. But then we still needed $50,000. And we're wondering, God, we, we're so close. We know you're going to be in the middle of this. You blessed us this far, so we know you're going to bless us. What did he do? Two ladies was having lunch one day, and one said to the other one, we need $50,000. Don't know how we're going to get it. We got to trust God. And this lady said, I tell you what, I'll loan y'all. 50,000. Say, what? She said, and this person had already gave us 5,000. But she said, I'll loan it to you, and I won't even ask you for no interest. Now, you tell me that wasn't a Samaritan blessing? That's love. That's what I call love. And she said, no interest. So we shouted over that. But I tell you what, September, we had the amount of money to purchase this church. I need to let you know we purchased it. I should never forget after we purchased it, I was going down Water Avenue, praising God. It reminded me, when I came to California in 1958, I know y'all going to add that, that age up, 58, I had two children. I had $2 and a phone number. I didn't even know where I was going until an uncle didn't even have his address. But when I looked and said, well, God, you a liar, and I... You know, I didn't have nothing. I had to have co-signers at least the first year or two here. But I found out I'm going down Water Avenue. Here, God will bless me to sign a $2 million for a building. Nothing but God. I don't know about you. If you think I'm going to be quiet, if you think I'm going to be cute in church, I can't help but thinking because you don't know, like I know, what the Lord has done for me. He picked me up so many times, turned me around. I can't help but love him. I don't have to worry about it. I don't mind telling the world I love him because I've told people I love him, and at the same time, they were stabbing me in my back. But I thank God when I, I don't have to tell him, I have to show him. So what love got to do with it, got to do with it? Show him you love him. Help somebody. Share with somebody. He blesses me and you to be a blessing. So may God bless you. May God keep you. Amen. I don't know about you, Faith, but I'm ready. I leave here. See, we can be Christians in here. But you know what love show when we get home, when we get with our friends, when we get with our neighbors? That's what love is all about. And maybe, maybe you do have love. Some people say they don't know how to show it. Show it. You show by doing. So today, if you don't know Jesus Christ, he loves you. He so loved you. He didn't just love you. He so loved you that he gave. And he said, all I need you to do is give back to me. Give back to me. Believe that I lived and died. And God, if you believe that, you are saved. And if you confess him as Lord and Savior, you are saved. You don't have to worry about what you have to do. You can't help yourself. Ain't nothing you can do. Only he can do it. He can change your life. He changed minds. I know he'll change yours. So may God bless Faith Fellowship, thank you for worshiping with us today. What a time we had in the, in the, in the Lord. It is now benediction time. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen and amen. God bless you, Faith Fellowship.